welcome back. This is episode 16 of the My Pet Care video show. In today's show, we'll hear about skin and coat conditions in pets and we'll take a look at a veterinary dental clinic in Australia. We'll smile with a pet, see what happens at a puppy party, and I'll offer you my quick pet care tip for this episode. I'm John Sheridan and this is the show that helps everyone with an interest in the management and care of companion animals, especially pet owners just like you, to keep your animals fit, happy and healthy members of the family. Here's a common pub quiz question. What's the largest organ of the human body? Of course it's the skin which has the largest surface area of all the organs and accounts for about 15% of body weight. The skin is the largest organ in pets too, so perhaps it's not surprising that skin problems seem to be one of the most common reasons for pet owners needing to seek professional help. Here's a clip from Banfield Veterinary Hospitals, which is all about skin and coat conditions in pets. Your pet's skin. Hi, I'm Dr. Webb, a veterinarian at Banfield Pet Hospital. As your partner in pet care, it's our goal to help keep your pet healthy and happy. Today, we're going to share some information with you about your pet's skin, coat, and grooming essentials. Your pet's skin and coat provide an important gauge for overall health. From areas of baldness or pink and irritated skin to matted fur, your pet might have skin issues during their lifetime. Regular brushing, bathing, and examining your pet's coat will help you keep an eye on what's normal for your pet so you can be aware of any problems before they become a bigger issue. Generally speaking, your pet's coat should appear shiny, clean, and odor-free. And the skin should appear healthy, without redness, crusting, or irritations. Skin-related issues can create signs like excessive scratching, rubbing, licking, or biting of a particular area. Matted fur, patchy spots of baldness, a sudden increase in hair loss, wounds, crusts, skin redness, or other changes in skin color are all reasons to bring your pet to Banfield for an exam. If you see black or reddish colored dust on your pet's coat and skin, it could be flea dirt. Flea dirt is partially digested blood. You can check for this by running a moist white tissue or paper towel over dirt gathered with a comb or brush. Flea dirt will turn the tissue reddish brown. Regularly examining your pet's paws and pads and trimming their nails will help keep them in good shape. Severely overgrown nails can curve around the paw and penetrate into the pads, causing pain and infection. Each nail contains nerves and blood vessels, or a quick, just like ours. The pinkish colored quick is usually easy to see in light colored nails. Now for the website search for this episode. Now let's switch the emphasis from skins to teeth and take a look at a clip from the Reservoir Veterinary Clinic in Melbourne, Australia. A range of symptoms from bad breath to severe mouth pain can all result from dental problems and most veterinary practices have the facilities and the expertise to put things right, usually on a day visit to the clinic. Here's what happens at this particular practice. Dental and gum disease is the most frequently occurring clinical condition in dogs and cats. Four out of five dogs over the age of three show signs of disease. Plaque hardens and forms into tartar. Left untreated, this leads to gingivitis, a painful condition of inflamed gums and periodontal disease. As a result, your pet experiences pain, just like a bad toothache, bad breath, and potential tooth loss. The bacteria found in the mouth can also have an impact on organ function throughout the body. So how do you know if your pet has gum disease? Often the early telltale signs are not obvious at home. Thus, regular dental checks by your veterinarian are essential. In some instances, you may notice the following signs of early dental disease. Bad breath, discolored teeth, gum recession and sensitivity, or in much more advanced dental diseases, we see more severe signs such as pouring at the mouth, facial swelling, excessive drooling, inflamed and red gums, reluctance to chew or eat, pain when handled around the head, and behavioural changes. Once gum disease is present, an electronic scale and polish is often the only way to remove built-up plaque and tartar. 
This procedure is similar to that performed by your own dentist using modern dental equipment and treatment methods. The main difference is your pet will need to be hospitalized and receive a general anesthetic as it is impossible to ask your pet to stay still for thorough dental therapy. Once your pet is anesthetized, we manually and ultrasonically scale your pet's teeth to remove plaque, tartar, and infection above and below the gum line. This needs to be done thoroughly and can be a time consuming process. If we find any loose or badly infected teeth, they will also be removed. Finally, our high speed polishing tool is used to slow further plaque development and to give your pet lovely shiny white teeth. Now let's smile with a pet for this episode. Today it's Simon's cat in a clip called Cat Mandu. Now for my quick pet care tip for this episode. Today we've looked at veterinary practices in the United States and Australia, and now for one here in the UK. Let's, let's see what happens at one of the weekly puppy party sessions provided by the Boness Veterinary Hospital for the owners of young dogs. One of Boness's free services is the weekly puppy party, where owners get advice and help with the complicated process of rearing young dogs and ensuring they're kept in prime condition. Well, we, um, we run puppy parties um, mainly to obviously socialise the puppies as early as possible. Um, and as you can see, it seems to work. Um, Molly came for a, for a four-week <laughs> course. Um, and they just, it's sort of a, a step up on their socialisation if you like, um, because you know they leave mum and the litter, then don't see anybody for three weeks due to the vaccination course and obviously getting, getting their level of immunity and vaccinations up to date. Um, so we're happy for them to start after their first vaccination um, and it just gives them a step up on socialising with other puppies, other people, other strangers, coming to the vets and not having a vaccination, you know, a needle in the back of the neck. They come here, have a great time and, and, and you know, enjoy themselves immensely. When it comes to puppy parties we have six in a class so puppy parties are slightly a bit more chaotic but usually quite controlled and as I say they tend to really enjoy it meeting, meeting other puppies, meeting strangers, getting used to other people as well as other puppies. So what's my quick pet care tip? Well it's this, once a puppy is fully vaccinated it's really important for them to socialise with other dogs. Well organised and professionally run puppy parties or classes are a great way to build their confidence and expose them gently to different sights, sounds, other dogs and other people. So if you're the proud owner of a young puppy, contact your local veterinary practice and sign up for one of their puppy, one of their puppy parties. You'll be glad that you did. Well that's about it for now. I'm John Sheridan and this is the My Pet Care video show. See you next time. Mm -hmm.